And let's start with the live. So it should be now live. Yep. Looks good. I'm wondering where those bars here came from because they haven't <coughs> always been there. But I don't know why it's now like appeared. But the image quality itself looks okay, so I think I'll go with that. Let's see, can I change that on the camera settings? Uh. Ah, now it looks better. Yeah, you can even see one me me messy desk. <laughs> so I'm continuing today with the same same painting I did the start with the last stream. It's still not looking right. I think that is the Help if I put white screen on. Oh yes, so that was the setting, I think. Yeah, now it seems to fill the whole screen. Webcams are so weird. Like uh, when I used to stream on my Windows PC, it was like stream settings were always like reverted back to the defaults. But with the MacBook, it doesn't do that. But apparently, some of the settings change. Sometimes, not always. It's really confusing. Um, what did last time? I think I, I think I didn't have these this area painted. I painted a little bit on my own time because I taped this to my like this white piece of metal I have on my table. Uh, I taped my painting directly to this one, so I can't do like do like anything else on my table while this painting is here. I think I will continue with uh, uh, like the flower pot. Maybe give it a little bit uh, detail on here as well. So I think this is something that changes the balance a lot because it will be dark. And also the background of the bunny will be dark darkish. So I think that will change it a little bit. I've been like really thinking how I want to frame it because I, I want the bunny to be the main subject. So I was thinking of giving the door frame quite dark edge. So it will be forming like a nice frame around the bunny. And I need to make sure that the bunny really pops up from the background. I may do it in the way that I will start to do the uh, dark here and then lighter it when it goes to center so it will be lighter on the bunny because this brown is quite mid-tone. If this bunny would be white then I would do dark background and same thing if the bunny would be black I would be doing really white background. Ruka. I don't know why my dogs are so parky today. I think it's neighbors <coughs> being on the yard. <coughs> they are not liking it. I'm using the same palette as last time. And mostly the same mixes as well. Where's the ox skull? Usually I don't use ox skull when I'm painting. 
but with this paper, since it's a little bit damaged, Montwall, no, not Montwall, a uh, mold in the rouge. I need to use oxcal on the, some places because it will be purely hard to <laughs> uh, almost like apply the watercolor. It will go really it will do weird stuff here. I'm not sure will the camera be able to pick up, but it's like how it goes is that uh, it's almost like resist the watercolor, so it will be ending up being like really patchy. And I need to add uh, oxcal, a lot of oxcal, to able to combat that and make the watercolor spread evenly on the surface. I'm just mixing some of the, more of the brown. Let's go with the darkest brown, it has sienna and sepia. And I want to continue with the shadows. Yeah, that's something that is bothering me because I have that there's some his cast shadow area, so I want it to be quite crisp. So I'm not blending it that much. Edge of door must be dark as well. Boyat. Roka. Yeah, there's neighbor's dogs are in the yard. So they don't like that. I really like the effect, like adding the edge here really make it make it look much better. Same with the here, I want to have the This paper has some weird areas like one of the areas around here, I think the Sizing is almost like give up. And same goes with the here. And here's one spot as well. I'm not sure will the resolution be enough to show that. But how I know that it is the sizing is that those are lighter areas. And I know I applied even wash there. So I think the water kind of, like the pigment kind of uh, sunk into the paper. So it will be producing those lighter areas. And they are like really hazy looking. That is something really like... Something what our glow should not be doing, so I assume that it is the sizing. But this paper is really old, so it is something that shouldn't be happening if you are using paper that is not gone old. I'm trying to make the As I want this the hole to be really visible because I, uh, it's important to convey this that this is a flower spot but at the same time I don't want to be looking like a hole in the roof because I assume that bunny <laughs> bunny doesn't like that it rains inside so it probably has patched that hole. Ah. 
I'm again darkening the shadowy areas here. I'm trying to make like really crisp lines because it's like also because I'm not doing the line out on this one. I need to have all of the areas uh, differentiated by the by the color. I really need to be watching that. That's also one reason why I want to have the door frame. Framed. Even if in reality there shouldn't be the edge, uh, it depends on the perspective, but we should see it on the edges and no, not so much on the like boats. Well, uh, well maybe the, how the perspective goes is like in the mid, so we should actually see the both of the lines, but maybe not at the top of the line. Yeah, top of the roof, not roof, uh, door frame. Yeah, this is the real I'm all, most worried that I need to have like communicate the shape and changing. But if we assume that the light comes from up, I just need to make this edge uh, a little bit darker than the top. Where I need the underpainting, I did quite smooth transitions. Here I tried not to make smooth transitions because the, I want to have like a little bit roughness on this terracotta pot. I'm actually going to switch the detail brush I have here. I usually go with the brush that is uh, natural hair. But natural hair is really thirsty and it holds a lot of water and it, when doing the tiniest bit of detail it can become quite hard to control the amount of water because there will be quite because it's a thirsty process when you dip it onto water it will be like absorbing a lot of it. So I'm switching to the Synthetic one, because this will be less thirsty, and I can get more color, at, and at the same time I can like control better where the water goes. And I'm sticking my head into the shot as well. Of course. I can get a bit more control with this one. It springs off really nicely. It starts to like, uh, I like this. Uh, like it's one of my favorite stages in the, uh, in the watercolors. Like, when you have done all of the underpainting, and then you start with the shadows, and the things start to like taking shape, and they start to come forward from the, from the painting.
I will not be able to have quite dark darks in this one. The darkest color I'm using is sepia, so it's not so not like really it's blackish brown. But I feel it's not so super strong as like using black or And here I need to be really mindful about this edge because it's edge, actually edge of the stairs is here. And if I want the stairs look, looking sharp and not round, I need to have a really like clear clear line between these two. I'm hitting uh, with my brush to the lamp. I think this area I need to add even more darks because it's currently lighter than the rim. I want it to be darker. I need to dry my brush because I had the area is so small that I have a little bit too much water there. I don't mind if that does bloom there. I'm actually kind of hoping it blooms there because I want to have some texture. It's, uh, it's like dirt there, so it is something that should have texture. So blooms are welcome. And here I'm again making the background darker so I can make the like small but more visible. This is quite hard area actually because uh, if we would go with the, how the light works, this is, would be quite light color because it's imagining the light coming this way. So in reality this shouldn't be this dark. But at the same time, I want to differentiate from this pot because these two are same color. So I'm trying to make really strong, A strong difference here. At the same time, I feel that this is really dirty brown on here, so I might need to bring up a bit more of the browns there at some point. There's something interesting happening as well. This is some blue, like it's not like blooming, but it's really like hazy in this area. Even if I remember when I painted this one, it was not wet here. But here I can see that some of the brown is like seep into the blue. Here we actually have brown spot. I'm not very careful when but it comes to watercolor. <laughs> and. It was one of the. I recently, it on my YouTube channel. I published it uh, on the. I think it was yesterday, or was it Friday? Uh, any case, uh, I had a tutorial how to paint bunny, like really simple line art tutorial in the watercolors. I tried to be really like. I tried to make it the way how I would like to, as a beginner. 
get the tutorial. It was my first tutorial I have ever made, so it felt quite, uh, I don't know, a lot of pressure. But I enjo uh, enjoyed it, and I actually think I, and it sounds weird that I actually learned a lot about, well, not a lot, but some things while painting and while filming that tutorial because I had to really think like what I do with my brush and what I do with my watercolors and explain that so I actually find it even like helpful to understand more of my own process now I feel like I'm avoiding this <laughs> white area here same goes with this I'll start and go with the details before I should should do that so let's switch the brush again. Hmm. I think I need to give the a greens a bit more. color because the green is really weak currently Let's see if I don't have a nice green mix. I usually have like really a lot of greens on my palette, so that's look way too bright. Here I can really see that the starting has gone bad because you see that there's like those little dots. It's not granulating color, so it has like paper way of telling that it has like some issues. But I hope it will go away when it dries. I just want to bring some some darkness to the grass. Mainly because I want to know how dark I need to do the this little garden area. I try to still keep the green quite evenly and not leave that much of the edges because at the later state I will do some like individual hair there so but I actually like how the green looks there so I might bring that here a bit more I don't think these are just in the shadow I have a little bit of the turquoise there as like test shadow and I'm not sure do I like it. Probably not. Now I'm going to wet this whole area. So my paper is taped, I'm like really liberate on that.
I'm going all the way to the edges because it, it just doesn't need to be sharp. How I know does the edge need to be sharp or not is that I think how it, the edge is in the nature. Like this edge is uh, coming from dirt uh, transferring to the grass. And that is not hard edge in the nature, so it doesn't need to be hard edge on the painting either. But with uh, somewhere like here, it's actually dirt and then it's a grass behind it. So it needs to be a bit sharper. So that's how I like go with my edge quality. Like deciding what I want, want it to be. I'm not going full dark with this patch because I don't want to bring too much too much contrast here and like too much attention here so I'm going with sepia. It's it's really good like ground color. <laughs> it's almost on to dry a bit so I'm a bit faster. I will do it a little bit darker on the foreground. And that's all right. In my option, in a way too dark. Blend it out a little bit. It's funny that sepia is one of those um, colors I usually don't grab if I'm like picking up the palette palette colors if I'm like pulling custom palette or I'm like adding colors to my uh, water, existing watercolor palette sepia is one of those colors I would never pick because it's really blackish and there is. No, it's not. Because sepia is really blackish, and it's one of those colors I would, I like think I would never use, like, because it's so black. But actually, in this painting, I have used it a lot, and reason being, uh, it's only dark, dark color in my schminke palette. I think it's came with the set, so this one has sepia. And you can see that there's no dark dark browns here. There's no brown, uh, burnt umber and not like raw umber either. Only darker colors ivory black. I rarely use use that. But the sepia is really the dark I then grab because it happens to be on my palette. Hi Boxer paint. Ah, oh, don't worry. It also was a daylight saving time going on, so I'm not sure I'm like an hour late or an hour too early. And happy birthday to your hobby. So that's why I picked the sepia. But it's really odd like... Uh, we are talking this about in the dance stream as well, that uh, some colors are like... Colors I would never pick like when I'm building the palette. But if they are on my palette, I might use them. Like this sepia one is one of those. Like I would never pick up sepia on my palette. But because it has to, it is here because this is pre-made palette mostly. So sepia is there, so I use it quite a lot. It's really weird. Like I was thinking I would use it that much, but I haven't been uh, missing like feeling that I would need burnt umber or something like that here. So sepia has been. I have been using that, but if uh, let's let's go through a little bit of this palette as well, and because I'm waiting that 
dirt, but stir to dry. In the painting. <laughs> Not in the like. So it feels like a really funny word to say. Dirt, but to dry. Yeah, in the painting. Uh, this is quite old palette, and I've been using it quite a lot. And many colors have quite deep, deep holes. Like burnt sienna seems to be one. Some that is uh, almost. I think the bottom is showing up there. Uh, same goes with ultramarine finest. I've been using this a lot, but Prussian blue are uh, really little. So now because I'm ordering some refills for this one, I'm also thinking switching out some of the colors. And one of I'm thinking switching out is the Prussian blue because I never use that. If I want darker blue, I go with the indigo, which is here. And then I have queen purple here, but I have also manganese violet. But I really grab the manganese violet because it's granulating, so I will probably leave the queen purple here only. Yeah, it's like sepia is like really. I don't. I don't think it's like a not maybe not a bad color, but it's really dark and quite blackish. But it seems to be quite versatile when you mix it with some other colors. Like here, I usually mix it with the uh, burnt sienna, and it becomes quite close to burnt amber. Hi, Lana. And let's see other other colors I have used a lot. A uh, yellow ochre, and also Naples yellow. Naples yellow surprised me a lot because I was it's all. Uh, also one of those colors that are really opaque, and I think I would never pick it up myself. But here it have like sizable dent in the middle. It's actually quite good with the skin tones. Uh, yeah, if I would pick, I was actually thinking uh, with the queen purple, getting the oxygen purple here, because I love the oxygen purple. Especially the core version is really good. Yeah, it's almost black in the mass tone. Then I have green gold here. This one I have added here myself. And then we have a cobalt green, which is also granulating. And I, I'm not a little bit used there. Then we have may green. I use a lot. Same with the phthalo green. Helio turquoise. Uh, this I use a lot, but it's newer color. I switched this out. I, I think I switched some color out here and added the helio turquoise. And then I have Thalo Blue Sapphire, which I love. I like the Thalo, Thalo Blue Sapphire version a lot. I like the shade, it's just like really beautiful. I was actually thinking to look more of the like Thalo did Pigment 15.3 or something like that. And I saw that Old Holland has different version of the Thalo Blue, so I might try those. Yeah, the dark side is really strong color. Like I, that was why I was thinking it would be good with the queen and the purple because the dark side is so overpowering in the mixes. Rutile yellow. Mm -hmm. That sounds interesting. At some point, I was uh, I was take, testing titanium buff, and I think it's one of my palettes has the titanium buff. But it's something I could consider here. <laughs> but you see, I have quite uh, ultramarine fine, so like really deep tint because I usually use quite much of gray in my paintings. And I have been thinking I could get because I use relatively this black. I think I'll switch this to some dark gray. N not because I couldn't mix it myself, but that would actually save up my ultramarine and my burnt sienna. Because I would then use more of the grey, then mix with these two, with these two colors. Hi, Mikey. And where we are? We were there. So the Prussian blue, then the indigo. I haven't used actually that much of the indigo as well, but I think it's more of the painting subject I have been choosing. Pinello fifty three. I think I. Love I want to look that up. So let's mark that to my. Why <laughs> there's like little thumbnail of this painting. Because 
pigment yellow 53. That is something I put. I will check. Uh, then there's the manganese violet and queen purple. Manganese violet quite used up, but it was before I asked the queen purple here. Then we have my problem zone, I would say. Uh, it's the area of where is my reds. And Magneta was original of this palette. And uh, not actually not the magnet. I think there was carmine here in this palette. And I have already get it out here. And I think I switch it. How with the queen purple. If I if I remember correctly, there was carmine at some point. Magneta I use rarely. I usually don't paint anything pink, but I'll uh, uh, I use it in mixes and it's quite nice color on that. Then I have deep red, because if I use red, I, it tend to be this really deep dark color. Then we have a cat red light, which I rarely use. Even if it's a bit of dent, it's used to be the only like uh, good red in this palette. But it's, I don't like it. I don't like cadmium colors. They just feel like really dull. And in the mixes, they, I don't like how they behave. Then I have the two, like, four colors. I am actually thinking I will, like, get two of these out. <laughs> I have a chrome orange. I've been using it a little bit. Then chrome yellow deep. Then I have a cat yellow light. Cat yellow light I rarely use. It's so opaque and you can see there's not much used. Lemon yellow I use a lot. So I'm thinking this may go out. Mm. Maybe this as well. I'm not sure. Uh, because these two I rarely use. I, I usually don't paint with the warm tones. Uh, this is something I, I rarely use and I'm more of the like colder tones. But it's like annoys me that like this palette has uh, I think these five colors take so much space in this small palette and I rarely use any of these. Well this yellow I use a lot but with these four colors I'm like barely touching them. <laughs> Actually this one is so rarely used that it's like cracking. Ah, Schmingy Mayan colors. I haven't... Ah, uh, Daniel Smith Mayan colors. I was thinking Schmingy Mayan colors and I was like, what I'm missing, but yeah. Daniel Smith Mayan colors. Yeah, the, the cat yellow is like really... It, I don't know why it's in here. I think it, it was a, it's also part of the original colors. But definitely going to uh, take that out as well. And probably the chrome. I'm not sure which one of these. I was thinking getting the cat red light out. Same with this chrome yellow deep out and the cat, cat yellow light out. And maybe adding pyrrole red here. Some really strong warm. Brow, uh, no, uh, red, because currently this one is not, not cutting it. Yeah, I have the uh, same things with the greens. <laughs> like, you would never think you would need like uh, this many of the greens in the palette. But because I tend to paint a lot of with the greens, I feel that when I have more of the greens, I have, can get more variety. And also they, uh, I run out of them with even face. Because if, even if I would have like only one green here, I can mix all of these colors, they are not like anything special. But if I wouldn't have that many greens there, I would be replacing green all the time. Pigment 150. I think that's... Oh, oh I have actually... Uh, yeah, I have actually thinking that then the cat red light away, because I have bright that warm that transparent red and germanium red. So I have been already thinking switching that out. But yet, this is only what goes into Schmincke palette. But this Schmincke palette is only one of them. I have been like, I, I would say like, I actively curate it. So if I find there are some colors that I don't like, I will switch them out. Other palettes I'm more like, I keep them how they are coming. Yeah, yellow is, 
usually if you uh, paint uh, flowers I but I tend to do like also I noticed that I need more browns even if I have like if you count the sepia I have four browns there but I'm thinking I may get one more brown there I was now thinking should I <laughs> color in this one this doorway because I think when I color this in it will, will look quite different relation to other areas I think the German in red is something Julana has recommended to me. And the weird thing is that I I rarely paint anything that has red in it, but it also might be the case that I don't have that good that much like good reds in my Schminke palette, because I don't like any of those reds there, so I rarely paint anything red. I'm like thinking this background thing. And I think I need bigger brush for that. Let's go with this Isabe Guil. This is like one of my favorite brushes. I remember when I got this, I was like really thinking, do I, what I will do with the wheel of this small size, but this has been really good. I can already see that even if I'm pre-wetting this area, the water is like forming droplets, so it's like not not getting absorbed in the paper. I actually. Oops, went a little bit over the bunny, so bunny is like reactivated. But it's not a big deal, I will fix it later. We'll go with the sepia. We'll paint most of the details inside later. I just want to have the shade here right because I'm I have a feeling that it's it changed a lot of this composition to not have like the big white blob there. This is closer to the shade it will be in the end. Rukas hair. Uh. Oh yeah, that uh, yellow goes really well with the purple. Yeah, I hope that you can soon like reunite with your palettes. 
actually what uh, gave me like uh, hope is that at some point because I was not doing any paintings and all of my palettes were like sitting there uh, was that watercolors don't go bad like the colors itself they they can hold really well even if they are unused so they will be feeling as fresh as like it hadn't like there won't be any pause in the painting Interesting, like, because, you know, even if I went quite close with the brush here, like this bunny area, there's still, like, halo left. It's almost like water is, like, escape, uh, escaping, like, shrinking when it dries. Same thing happened here a little bit. I'm gonna drink some tea. I'm just really interested to see what happens here. Like this brown, because I went a little bit over with this brush here. It's like pulled out the color a little bit, but it means that this area was wet. So this sepia should have gone all the way to there. It's a little bit over the bunny, but it actually like escaped here and his like gap. I have a similar gap actually on this area. Also, if I'm if I'm not mistaken, there's those lighter spots that we have here door as well. So there's like sizing sizing difference as well. But it's water color, so it will be reactivated later, and it will be hopefully be gone. <laughs> Some colors bleed more when that's yeah. I can say uh, gore is one of those colors that really loves to do backgrounds. It's like it's like really especially if you have some dark gore color and you go even close to that with the brush, it will be like jump there. But it's really changed like how it looks when it's dark inside. Yeah, Panda is really a good timing for the Easter. Actually, before I had like, I, I think I, before I had like a regular streaming day on Sunday, I usually did some super long streams on Friday. Some like really old, like way, way back. Because I remember I had those really long Friday stream and it was so long that my router like melted. It, it like burned because it's like 
it was uh, streaming, I don't think I was streaming like eight hours or so, but really long. I'm thinking that Sunday is like really nice streaming day. I have been really enjoying also that the Lana stream is after me and the Dan stream is before me. So it's like stream after stream. This still feels cold to touch. I probably soak it really good. Where this ara is dry and there's Levi's hair. <laughs> uh, Levi's hair is much easier to spot on the painting because he has some black hairs. And Ruka's hair is really sli sneaky because if the paper is dry, the white hair doesn't show up that well. But when you wet it and color it, the white hair will be like clumping all the colors around it. So <laughs> it will become more apparent that there's Ruka's hair. Oops, I have my head in the shutters again. I was thinking I want to add this because this edge looks really funny that it's like really straight, even if it shouldn't be, because it's like between dirt and the grass, so I'm adding a little bit of the brown dots there and some texture. I was thinking should I do the green green leaves now and paint all around them or paint them later. Maybe I paint them now. So they will be brighter. If I try try to paint them all with the black it may not show up so well. I don't know how I expect the cat hair to be easier to manage than dog hair, but the dog hair sticks to stuff and the cat hair just floats around in there. Yeah, uh, bunny hair is also like closer to cat hair. It's like uh, really fine and it's like really static. So even if you get it out of the paper, the static of the paper will uh, pull it back. It's really hard to remove bun bun's hair in the paintings. Also at one point I was like really wanting to try, I actually had oil colors, I had like water slope oils and I didn't like their smell and also I had a really hard time to remove the hairs there because they need to dry a long time uninterrupted and I just ended up them having like covered in the bunny's hair. I think this is like really opaque mix. Yeah, so I don't need to worry about that. I can do the sepia. Sepia there before.
I know that it must have been a little bit green tinge now because I didn't cream, clean my brush that well. I'm making small circular motions to be because I don't want any hard edges. I try to keep it looking like it's like a pile of dirt. <laughs> I can hear like Rugais rubbing his ear on the downstairs. And here I want it to be darker again. Yeah, I have found that the cat hair, even if the cat is like short haired, they have really like soft type of fur. And it's like, depends on the dog as well. My both of my dogs are like double coated, so Ruka has those like top coat fur that is like really uh, almost like, quite rough. But he also has the under fur that is like really fluffy, and that under fur is the thing that he blows. <laughs> but with the Levi, he has like long silky hair as the top coat. But the cat's hair, they have it, it's really like light and really fine. And I think the finer the hair, the harder is it to manage. And Bun Bun's hair was really, really soft. But you can also have bunnies with a different type of fur. Like Bun Bun had quite long fur, but I know that some bunnies have, have like shorter fur. And there's also that uh, coat that been, can be like velvety. I was thinking that this would be a perfect task for some old damaged, damaged brush, but I actually don't damage my brushes that often, so I don't have like old brush that is like bristles pointing every direction. I remember when I started watercolors, I was really wanting to paint in the like really smooth, almost big digital art type of uh, way. And now when I'm getting like, I, I don't, I, it's the right way to say the older, <laughs> I'm more into like really textured and 
dry brush look. Only thing I'm here worried is that I don't want to leave too much of the highlights here because I don't want it to look like it's there's like a highlight. One color would be really perfect here and it would be the lunar black because it would granulate really beautifully here. Oh, hello, Paolo. Um, offering. Oh, that's yeah, that like nose, like the nozzle spray stuff. Yeah, that is really like. I don't know how it goes with the other countries, but because in the Finland we have to like do gravel and sand on top of ice so we can walk here in the winter. And when it's come to spring and they start to sweep those up with the machines, the dust in the air gets like really thick and it's like really dusty outside. And everybody does like get some allergic reaction and many then start to use those nasal sprays. Ooh, tiramisu. Oh, it was the fancy tiramisu you linked in the Discord. Well, so the picture. It, it looked really beautiful. I have uh, once made tiramisu, but it wasn't like a regular tiramisu. It was tiramisu and runeberg torte. So, so it was like a little bit different than usually. I think I'm letting this other to dry because it's starting to get wet. I'm <laughs> really touching the paper to make sure that it's like dry. <laughs> yes, it's like. Also, I feel that this Moulin de Rose is one of those papers that makes blooms super easily and they are super apparent and super strong. <laughs> like, it's, it's annoying that it does that. No, I'm actually painting the pot here. I'm actually really tempted to grab out the lunar black and paint this area with the lunar black, but I think I don't have have it close by. Let's see because I know that I have some of the watercolors in this drawer. Do we have lunar black? Because I know there's Daniel Smith's tube here. You have graphite grey, hematite violet, and iridescent scarabed red. But no lunar black. What else there is? Oh, and there's also the queen purple. I have some sample but that was here as well. Hmm. Interesting. Also one pan of Roman small. Kuna kone scarlet. Uh, 
let's see what it said. And it has a Mica PV20 Marsh Red PR101. Yeah, so it's. I think it has green. Green luster. No, I don't have any of the. Here. I'm, s I'm sure I have the granulate in black somewhere. Omelette with American cheese and onion. That sounds lovely. It's getting quite late here, but we have we have already had dinner tonight. Tonight. Now I'm like really bothered. Like, where's my lunar black? I'm actually keeping my water gloss really badly organized because you see that I had like four tube of Daniel Smiths there. But I know that I have some other paints and other covers as well. I I really should keep them better organized. Chinese profit. Oh. I'm a bit. I uh, don't know how these leaves will turn out because they they are subject I'm not so familiar with. Even if I have like sketched them on my sketchbook quite often, I rarely like do them from reference, so I don't look them. They they may turn out quite unrealistic. I think I will just layer different greens here and hope for the best. <laughs> Mr. Lemon. Oh, that's a good name. We broke the dab and ate our food. <laughs> Mr. Lana. I, I have got happy for happy for I just thought, oh, Mr. Summer, I am so very back with mothers. Yeah, I tend to call my boy, uh, my partner as my boyfriend, even if even if we like all the house together. <laughs> I have, like I'm really bad at remember remembering people's names if I don't like see them written constantly. So I I sometimes forget them and then my head the people may start to have like really like I'm like thinking them as either they are some somebody's like spouse or kid or then they may have like the like one of my workmates was like the one of workmates that used to have same model car as I do. <laughs> so it was like they tend to get um, quite long names because I don't remember the name his name so he's like 
Että mä en halua, että se ei muodella kaaraa saidu. Aineen kai se oppii. Bit more careful with this one. I think I'm going with this area. Because it's buttery meal that has like light haze around it. I'm not going to uh, wet the whole area. But I'm going to wet most of it. Then I will be digging a little bit of the sepia. And try the brush and spread it out. Do what some other streams do. <laughs> ah, that's good. Oh, that that's so nice. Like, that's so helpful because uh, I always struggle when I don't remember people's names. So it's like, uh, it's like uh, because I'm really shy. So it actually makes me even more shy and like I don't have to say anything because I don't remember the per person's name. And when I was uh, keeping like dog obedience classes, <laughs> I remembered all of the dogs' names and none of the people names. So I referred all <laughs> uh, everybody by their dog's name. But it, it was okay. Like everybody was like kind of like expecting that. I want to darken the body of the bunny as well. So I don't like the darkening of the head and I want like the body to be the same similar shade. <coughs> oh, sorry. I think I got Rukas hair in my nose. <laughs> oh no! It's, it's... Yeah. Rukas hair is like really annoying, like because it's so long, if you, even if you sneeze it out, it's usually because it's like, it doesn't come out all the way, so it's like, keeps bothering you. I'm like really... How, how could I describe it? When I was think, watching this painting, I feel like I'm like really... Because I've been jumping all, all around it. 
I I feel like I should see places where I should be painting, but I'm like really questioning where I should go next. Maybe I go with the. This area seems to be dry, so maybe I go with the that area. And I'm trying to give these really subtle colors more like hinting what is on the background without actually painting the background. There's a round window, so I'm giving it a little bit of the sky color. Now I need to decide the color of the curtains. I'm really tempted to go with the orange, because I would think uh, Bunny would love orange curtains. I have a, I have also a problem that my name is really easily remembered. Uh, I, I don't know why it's probably because uh, usually in the work I work in the like tech industry and there's really few who are working in the tech industry. So I like <laughs> my name like really uh, pops out. So everybody remembers my name and I like don't remember anybody. Oh, name decks are so good. We used to have those at the, uh, in our previous office. But now, because we have different uh, kind of like door mechanism, because before we used to use the name badge to open the doors. So everybody has the name badge. But now we have a key, so nobody is carrying the name badge anymore. Oh, thanks, Monkey. Yeah, I'm actually liking the. I, uh, I had actually the idea in the other day when I saw uh, Hare on our backyard, and the Hare was looking into the our yard almost like he he was he would be thinking like he should do some gardening work. So I was thinking that I I really need to paint a pony with the gardening. At, at one point I really tried to remember people's names and having like all kinds of patterns, but I, I just can't. But I remember better if I see the name written in the written format. format I, that stick much better in my brain. Also I tend to remember people's car models. Like... <laughs> it's getting that really odd. I 
I think this area of the painting is really uh, much further than this area. Oh, that's... I really paint this large scale of painting and I, I started to remember why. I find it a bit hard to like concentrate on the this large piece. Also in Finland, this is this weird thing that people have a lot, like, uh, like they have a lot of similar names. And it becomes really <laughs> odd sometimes, especially if they are, um, they are like, if they have been popular names of one, like, time frame. It becomes really weird that you will have, like, five people that have the same name in the company. And that's, that's really normal, like... Like, we don't have that many names. <laughs> names here. Now it become a bit better, I think people are uh, wanting to give their kids a unique name. And I think that's good, because it helps that they are like not five people with same name at class or something like that. But Finland also has quite strict naming policy, like name has to be accepted. And it, the, how it's written should be uh, fini uh, fitting to how things are written in Finnish. So it may cause some... <laughs> Because the names to be like really, really similar together. But finally my name is like there's only one version of it. Yeah, we have them like no weird spellings. I think the pop uh, popular Finnish names are like uh, it's mostly like traditional names that are super common. Also, my view might be a bit screwed because I because the tend of the because in the work I tend to work with the certain age group and but the, uh, some really common names are Juha and I think Juhani is one of the most common name, but Juhani is usually like second name, so that's why it becomes the common name. But Juhani, Juha, and Juho are really common. In the, they are all male, male's name. Uh, in the woman's name, there's a bit more variety. But uh, like old names that are uh, like Finnish version of the Christian names are, are really popular as well. Yeah, Juhani. Uh, 
and we often have like we have like one name and then we have variety of the ways like Mikael. It's really I think it's a common name, like quite global Mikael. But then we have Mika and Mika and Mika. And those are all different names. And it it gets like really it's really funny that like like you have one name that we have there with all of those different names that sounds really like same. A, A B C D. That's that's really interesting name. I would say it, it's it, it sounds like really that would be easy to remember actually. But yeah, Finland has really a lot of same names. Also Matti. Matti is also really common. Like one company I worked, uh, they said to me that ask, ask from Matti. And I go and ask from Matti. And Matti said, no, no, not, not me, the other Matti. I go to the other Matti. <laughs> then... Uh, the other Matti was like, no, 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 not me, the other Matti. There was four Matti in that company. And when I got the fourth Matti, he says, no, 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 it was the other Matti. And it actually was the first Matti. But it was like four Matti. And it's a small company. Like, it just happened to have all the Mattis there. And funny thing is, uh, two of them were electricians. So because I was being asked from Matti about electrical stuff, of course I was thinking it's that, like... It's just weird, in these funny moments. And that's why most some sometimes people are referred by their surnames here. Uh, Matti. It's uh, T-I ending. Finnish spelling is a bit weird. No, that, that sounds like a name smoothed. And in Finnish usually you get uh, like... The first name you get is usually like... Ny, like I would say Ny, but uh, yeah, that's the correct Matti. <laughs> like if the first name is get uh, like Ny and then your second name. And if you happen to have a third name, those are usually then that are like running in the family. And yes, uh, Syöne is not my my real name. I'm like, I'm not using it. And the reason why I'm actually not using my first name in the internet is that it, uh, because how it's written, it gives like wrong impression how it's uh, pronounced. Because Finnish use different way of pronouncing letters. It's like, it would get really confusing, so... I opted to use Cyan. Yeah, I think it's, uh, I think they are from like same origin. I think it's like Matthew or something like that, biblical name that is like derivative. But Matt is uh, also a really common name here. And it's also one of those names that are often used as example. And it's also 
completely okay if you have like some kind of really like some people have a nickname they use all the time more than their first name and it's it's not common but it's completely okay here like if you like want to be called by your nickname that's okay too and people usually do that even in the workplace like Finnish workplace is quite quite relaxed about the naming things like I, uh, I rarely call my co-workers with this last name I usually use their first names or their nickname some of them have like have like nicknames they use in the work Matt house oh the house it's like a with two dots that's actually a letter in the finnish as well and matthias uh matthias is also name we have here it's not common but it's it's like normal name here Yeah, I think it's from Johannes. Uh, Johannes is also a name here. <laughs> like, it's the same thing that we have the Johannes and then they have had uh, maybe Johan also name here. And then Juhani and then Juho, then Juha. <laughs> but it's also really hard, like in Finnish, like we can have Juho and Juha. And those are different names. They, are, they have like different last letter. And same goes with like Miko and Mikko. There's like different, yeah, one letter difference and it becomes different name. And also because how a Finnish grammar goes, if uh, sometimes it's hard to different those because when we are using the genetive, it becomes like Mikon, both for Mikko and Miko. So it's it gets interesting. Also the names that have like meaning. Uh, we have some of those like uh, Tuuli. Tuuli means wind in Finnish. And then it's like uh, the person can choose. Does she want to the name, how it want to be like. Uh, change it when it's like putting it again. Like it's Tulin or Tulen. Tulen is for more like this correct for the name, like correct for the as it's as the wind. But Tulin is correct it for as the name. <laughs> so it gets super confusing. Even for Finnish speakers. Ah, so people have like different names. Ah, uh, Finland doesn't have that kind of thing. But I think some of the, uh, some countries have. I, I happen to lost some of the. wood grain here because I was applying wash here. I'm adding it a little bit to the back. On the up part as well, because now I think that
<laughs> that's that's really long in yourselves. Let's say some type of other one saying them to grant for ourselves. So. Yeah, it's like I know some countries you have like I think it's in Spain you kind of have like two last names, and that's like really confused me out. But here, usually the last name is just like one word. As, uh, sometimes if it's like two words combined, you can use like the line between them to like connect them. But usually they are just like the one, one word. I like the that the bunny has orange curtains. Also, I feel that sometimes when the names get really long, like if you have a, a long two first names, or you have like a really long one name, which is possible in Finnish, and then when you have to like write your name on the like forms and stuff, stuff it can becomes really hard, like because sometimes there is not enough room. And uh, then is because I have three first names, like uh, first name, second name, and third name. And sometimes uh, when the, I use some automated forms, I run out of the character space and then it cuts uh, out my third name. And that annoys me so much because it becomes like a completely different name when you remove the letters from the pack. I'm trying to. I think I'm keeping this curtain here quite like low. Not low, like uh, not so well defined because I think it's quite in the shadows. I like how the door looks, but I don't like how the, <laughs> this area looks. Oh, that's like, yeah, that's happened to me as well. I think I was, uh, I think I was flying and uh, because I was flying by the, it was like school trip. So they used the name that I'm assigned, like I was uh, registered into school and those had like, they were missing like last letter of my third name. And when I was getting in the plane, they were like, these names are not matching. And I was like, yeah, they match. They're just like missing the last letter on the third name. Like, no big deal. Everything else matched. But they were like, no, it's not matching name. I was like, yeah, because we are running out of the characters in the... <laughs> it was like so bizarre. Like you have 
like trying to ex explain them that nope, yeah, the names are matching, but there's just like one letter missing. But it felt like really, really weird thing to happen. Yeah, I was thinking, uh, actually one of, one of the sketch I think I had like the whining plants here. I was also thinking of adding whining plants on the design as well. But I think currently this is like a really good example of like ugly stage. Because this one is really, uh, really like finished, like really close to finish. This one is like uh, not painted to have small flowers. This one is like really like on like like under was there done. Same with the bunny, he's like holding a white <laughs> blob that should be like watering can. And he has just no eye. So it's like worrying worrying like worrying stays of finishes. I I like admire those watercolor painters that can just go like they paint the whole thing and it's like keeps coming like evenly out. Like I have seen some some do that, and I'm always like I I can cannot do that. I just always will jumping around, and then I will ended up having like weird mismatch, having no underpainting on the uh, watering can, and then having finished the door. <laughs> or somebody who can do like starting on the one corner and keeps. Keeps it getting, getting uh, from there. Like no, nope, I cannot do that either. Oh, that's really uh, really nice name. Mikaela. I'm really bad at pronouncing <laughs> pronouncing them, but wait for the <laughs> second part of my show, so I can never check in in line. Yep. Uh, at one point, there was I had a problem. I couldn't use. Uh, well, I had to get PayPal quite early before it was like a uh, big thing, thing because. Uh, Amazon wouldn't let me check in, uh, like, uh, check out because I had the O with the two dots in my last name. <laughs> I have a nice, uh, walk, Paolo. I'm happy that my dogs are, for once, not parking. I think they they have been a really... They have had like a lot to say lately. Maybe I will just like try to focus on this flower pot and make it a bit more finished because it feels like it's just tracking behind.
I'm not sure which these flowers will be because I'm just like I think I've been drumming like most generic flowers there is. <laughs> I think that they're going to be blue, so they probably are dark enough to go over this brown. To give a bit more variety to this brown. I can hear that uh, Levi's having some dreams there. <laughs> oh, Levi's having some kind of dream. I don't know what he is dreaming, but I could easily like his dream parking. Thing. Yeah, and also when the like handwriting were more co common in the forums, it was like really so sometimes like hard to hard to read. And I also felt that uh, at least here people have like assum assumptions like if you are in tech field, many uh, assume that you will have really not nice handwriting. And also there's goes that gender role that all like women have nice handwriting. I don't have a nice handwriting. And then there was uh, one of my co-worker who was like a maintenance worker. And he had written uh, one note and he had like, I, I said like really beautiful, perfect handwriting. And everybody assumed it was uh, that I had written the note because it was so pretty handwriting and um, most of know that I write with uh, fountain pens. So everybody was assuming that it has to be my, that I left that note and people came ask me about it. And I was like, I haven't writing any notes. But yeah, it was the maintenance worker. Let me. Yeah, Lemmy sounds like a nice, nice name. Actually, my mama has quite a long last name. And she often gets really funny versions of those. <laughs> Especially if she had said that on, over the phone. <laughs> it's, it, it, it may get something really like, weirdly spelled. And the salad. Lemmy toes. For me, Lemmy is like the fountain pen.
how I can have like long dog hair on my painting. Where does this come from? Like I would understand if I would have dogs here and upstairs, but no, they are not here, and still their fur is here. That sounds like a really easy job to do. Uh, at one point I was thinking I would love to be on like uh, on some work I could just knit all day. Because I just started to, like uh, I finished my knitting project today. So I have been knitting cardigan, quite long cardigan, but it's got finished today. And I started the new one, I started to crochet project. So I'm crocheting a shawl. I think it's coming together. And this one I don't like so much because I did it like dry pressing and it's all too even, it looks like hair. <laughs> so let's cover that up. We don't want to have Harry Potter. <laughs> Harry Potter! <laughs> well, like, well, not Harry Potter, but uh, no, Harry Pot Planter. <laughs> I, I I sometimes forget that because it's uh, pronounced very differently in Finnish. Oh, I'm not sure it works, but it just can't make it work. I'm going to have one line without the needle, so I can basically braid one. And just uh, put them together. I can actually. I'm waiting for that to dry out. Pick my. Since this one is small enough to show, so it's like this. It's a bit uneven, but it'll be even out when it's done. And I can like stretch it. Or like block it. I figure out turning and counting. Yeah, how I usually just go with the turning is that I just... It depends on what your pattern says. But this one has quite a special pattern, I don't have it with me. But usually it's like... Do like... And then I... Whoop, just rotate the work and because I have the chain here, the chain can like twist quite freely. And then I can just like continue here, whatever the 
pattern set. But I have been crocheting quite quite long. I was really really like young kid when I learned crochet so. And the yarn is I'm using is cheap cheapies. <laughs> it's like really it's like uh, like multicolor, it goes from green to brown. I was thinking we should sometimes have like hangout in the Discord where we could all just knit. Because I, I really enjoy reading Discord when I'm knitting. But then I can't say anything because I'm knitting, so it's like it would be fun to have like hangout. The top ara is looking quite light. It's too hard to building. It was actually the triple of the top. Oh, that sounds so lovely. Like, I actually have been thinking because we have like, uh, we have balcony. Like we are living in the detached house. And we have a balcony and I rarely use that because it's like, uh, the, because it was not nice shape when we moved here, but last summer we put the flooring there, so I'm thinking it would be a perfect place for like sunbathing. And it's really like uh, nobody can see there, so it's like really, really nice, nice location. But secrets like that are are super nice. I'm like thinking the giving this top part some color as well. I suspect this area as well has some issues in the sizing. It behaves quite oddly. It is one of those things that I would love to show, like look under the microscope, because it would be interesting to see how the mother color actually behaves on that area. Our garden is planned perfectly to have the every neighbor back window looks directly on the... Oh no, that's... We have a bit of the same problem, but we are hoping that uh, when the summer starts and our fans start to grow, that it will be like... Uh, well hidden. And also, the um, reason why we built up the fence is that we wanted to have fence that nobody will cut down because... Uh, our neighbors has had a fence, like bush fence, but uh, they got that down, so they had like direct view to our backyard. But our balcony is like how it's situated because it's on the second floor. It is like you can you cannot see it there anywhere. I'm also thinking like having like really nice, nice flower arrangement there and maybe a little table and desk. And I was thinking like some kind of sun bathing divan or something like that. <laughs> yeah. 
that's that's like how how it's in our case like last summer uh i i put our like garden were really beautiful because there was like all these new plants go growing and i like like our garden i like do garden work then i was realizing that when i'm picking all the weeds that i have to be really careful where i point my butt because it would be like snowing up direct to the neighbors but I hope the fence will grow soon and we don't need to think about that anymore. Also, I find it hilarious that um, Ruka doesn't care about that at all. Like, if he poops on the, our backyard, he will just, like, aim his butt directly to the neighbors. <laughs> like, really funny. Like, he started pooping. He lets like, walk around and, like, turns it so that the neighbors will get his Side. Yeah, we have the same thing. Like we, uh, the neighbor has like huge hedge. Uh, it was like on the neighbor's yard, but uh, it blocked like view to our yard really well, and it was good because our. Dogs wouldn't then see that if our neighbors are walking on the yard or anything like that. But they cut that down completely. So now we have... It's actually not so bad in our case because our house is uh, in the era that there wasn't that big windows. And we don't have big windows that way. So And I have quite a lot of plants indoors, so we cannot see that well. But our neighbors have like windows from like top to bottom. It's like almost like a glass side at their whole house. And we can see like directly to their living room. Yeah, and also our neighbor has like really nice tall and old like evergreen tree there. But they cut it down. So now it's like completely bare their backyard. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> so I'm like really planting everything into our yard so no neighbor can cut those down and we will have a nice, uh, nice back backyard that nobody will like peek into it. But we have mostly like small small plants there and flowers because I, I really enjoy flowers. That actually reminds me that I should be planting uh, pre-planting our petunias because I collected all the petunia seed from last year and I need to plant those up. Yeah, oh, that's like an annoying neighbors. Yeah, I'm like a bit worried that our neighbors might be like that because they haven't yet complained uh, about anything, but we don't, we haven't been uh, quite much in touch. But I'm, I'm, but I have heard that they may be a bit noisy and uh, complain about stuff. I'm happy that in our housing complex we have nice neighbors. Because in the end those are the neighbors we need to have the stuff work it out.
when we actually bought this house, uh, our backyard was uh, completely like lawn, and there's only one tree and one sad flower bed that was like never kept. It was really like poor shape, and I dig all of those up and put the nice like uh, fence there, uh, like hedge, hedge fence, and then. Then we actually moved the tree because the tree was planted so close to the uh, edge of the like our lot, so it was almost on the like city side of the lot. So we just uh, moved it to our lot, so nobody can uh, like knock it down. It's uh, apple tree. It uh, it doesn't do like uh, eatable apples, but it's really beautiful. It has like uh, shape of like umbrella. So really beautiful tree. And um, we moved that. And I had like, I have two huge flower beds there, and then uh, some other small bushes, and it's really nice. And we have also some garden bed and stuff. Also thinking I would add some some more garden stuff there. Like I would love to get second raised bed and having like double raised it and having some carrots and stuff, stuff like that growing there. We have blueberries currently. But the problem is that um, I don't know how well the blueberries do, does with the rugas lifting legs there. And we also had uh, raspberries, but I think raspberries are gone. Because there was some excavation <laughs> on that side of our yard. Excavation by Ruka and Levi. So, there was some... I'm not sure will the raspberry survive. Uh, welcome back, Paolo. We also have like some uh, native plants, like native flowers planted. I have some seeds I grow there last year and they are hopefully being growing in this year as well. This is area that we can't reach with our lawn mower, so nobody will cut land on that, that plot, so I decided that it's a good place to let some nati, na, native flowers grow, grow there. Huh. I'm thinking I really need to. I maybe need to bring some gouache this out as well, or some more opaque so I can get those greenies looking better. Ah, oh, super purple flowers. Oh, I love purple flowers. And what we have on our flower beds, we have the moon lilies. I don't know what they're called in English, but in Finnish they are moon lilies. Le well, literally translated. And I have some Stargazer lily there. And then, because I like the plants that have like really colorful leaves, I have 
Many of them have like variegated leaves, I have picked those out. Then because uh, one section of the, our yard is like getting constant uh, strong sun, uh, I put some rock garden there. So I have some rocks and then I have some levisias and some rock, rock plants. And they did really well there last year, so I think that was good, good choice there. And then I have some uh, poppies, Pop poppies, because I really love poppies. I think their large flowers are just so beautiful. And last year I had like uh, pom pom poppies. Those were super pretty. They make like those huge, uh, like pinkish, uh, like pom pom shape of flowers. They were really pretty, and also I had uh, really uh, dark peony poppies that were like almost black purplish flowers. I have been thinking that I'd, they are just like making. They would make some lovely reference photos next year. Sadly, poppies are uh, are annual, so I need to plant them again this year if I want. Uh, definitely snowdrops and tulips. Hanging bodies of trough braids as well. Yeah, I think some some of them are like are perennials. Are not perennials the perennial arrival. Like they they go multiple years but the version I have here is the one year. It was also nice that when I... Uh, the house original flower bed that was really small and it has some plants that I didn't like because I know those are like... Plants that are like really spread out and they don't flower nicely and they were not just not my style I give them away it's a like local place you can just post your stuff to give it away <laughs> and it was really uh, nice to say that some people like were really happy that they could get some gardening plants so it didn't go to waste I love that I didn't buy them, they just show it up. Yeah, actually my uh, grandma had uh, many years back and she was like wondering what uh, purple flowers she had in her garden. And she was like, she was like telling everybody that she has not planted those and everybody was like, are you sure? Like they look at like really prettily planted and they were like really, really pretty flowers. And uh, it took five years to figure out what the plant was. <laughs> and apparently it was was planted originally there by her mother. And it was just like dormant ten years underground. And suddenly pop it up. <laughs> and that was like a really random thing. Like, like if you have some sudden flowers popping up that might be indication that they have been dormant underneath. Blackberries. Yeah, uh, that was my worry when I got the raspberries here because the <coughs> raspberries are quite invasive, especially the wild raspberries here in Finland. 
So I was a bit worried that how my raspberries will do. But I got the variety that should be not so spreading. But my raspberry is not doing good because the Rukas <laughs> excavation they like dig huge hole there. So I'm suspecting no raspberries. We get one raspberry last year there. So I probably need to do some work and maybe plant something else there. It's not so wrong that planting some something there, but it's more like keeping dogs away from it. Because I want to, at the same time, if I want that we have pretty garden, I also want it to be functional that I can, I can just like hang in the porch and having dogs there and no need to like constantly keep them away from stuff. It's funny that like dogs, how they learn to eat the raspberries. My grandma has problems that their dogs start to eat the strawberries. And the dog was also really smart. Like the dog never went to eat the strawberries when somebody was watching. And the dog only went there when nobody was watching. It was really smart dog. But it was uh, part of part collie. It was mixed breed, but there was definitely some collie in it. So now having border collie myself, I can clearly see like, yep, their mind are really, really, they are really smart. I'm mixing darker brown for the fence. Maybe it's not so good idea to lay a hand over that. I like this dust. It looks so, so much more like a fence when I add it. just tiny little shadows there. Little blackberries. Yeah, actually we had uh, some wild uh, raspberries here and raspberries like it usually grows in the cities so like urban environment and something I would personally never eat on the roadside because all of the dogs going to FOP and you know what there can happen also the traffic is quite close to them The 
then we have some other berries like blueberries that grow in the forest far away from any kind of traffic so those are more, much safer to eat. funny like how I think it's just these little shadows on the fence it's just suddenly like start to appear much more fence like First bloom. It's really interesting. Like you're yeah, talking about the first bloom, and we st uh, we had like more snow today. <laughs> like <laughs> no blooms. <laughs> no, not even the first blooms. <laughs> and still like snow on the ground. And still no sign of grass. It's also one of the problems uh, trying to grow something here in Finland because the. Growing season is really short on the both side. It come, it becomes cold early, and it also is like it's summer is really start quite late here. I need a little bit of uh, details to the ground, and I think I will end the stream soon because it has been two and a half hours, and I start to lose my <laughs> a little bit of concentration I have had. That makes it much better having the uh, not so stark line between the house and the grass. Oh, there's a white spot. That's the uh, annoying thing this paper does, like... It's like when you suddenly are like blending, it's just like... Leaves the oil paint and becomes that white, white patch. I should move that a little bit. Easter Mikey. Yusu. Oh, I, I would love to paint yusu, uh, plant yusu here because uh, the few times I haven't tasted anything that is yusu flavored, it's, it's just lovely. But I think it's usually out of uh, plants that grow here. It's 
it's interesting like even this tiny tiny things I have done here it makes so much more sense this painting it makes everything like pops and just like whole whole piece come nicely together even if I st uh, I don't usually paint like finished pieces this large <laughs> and it's like it takes time like it takes quite a bit of more time than painting something in like A5 for format and also the ugly state is there for longer but yeah I think I will yeah I think I will end the stream stream my one I think uh, I may need to f I may finish this like next stream or earlier because I might paint this on outside of streams as well. But yeah, thanks everybody for watching and thanks everybody in the chat. And I will be in the Lana streams. Uh, will Lana will your stream start on like on which time? Because it has been daylight saving time here. So I'm thinking it's like one hour or it's like half an hour this moment and of course I can always check it on the Twitch I'm really bad using Twitch. I yeah, if I already collect it like half an hour. <laughs> okay, in thirty minutes, yeah. Thanks. Yeah, it's like one less hour. Me too. Yeah, I, I totally felt like I don't like that they are switching the daylight saving time. It's actually not saving that much daylight and also messes up leap schedule so badly. So yeah, I, I hope I see you in the last streams as well. So bye.